Forest Lodge, Scotland. Marked the halfway stage of the 2017 season of the British Cross Country Championship. Martin Cooled comes into this round, top of the table, 10 points ahead of Justin Birchall. But this is fast, very fast. Is it going to suit the light and nimble rivet or is it going to suit the outright pace of Justin Birchall? Person in the lead of the championship, Martin Gould, is about to get run one under the Look at it go, popping and banging flames everywhere. Justin Birchall next. You could have the out and out pace here, you love it here at Forest Lodge. I do love it here, uh, I do have some gremlins here as well. Uh, but hopefully, you know, lady looks on my side, I've got the gremlins out, the, you know, they set up for the car. We're, we're second year with the car now, so I shouldn't have any issues. Uh, yeah, it's a fast event, extremely fast. There's only two place sections and I've got 15 seconds. I'll see you later. See you later. Adrian Marfell and his Fouquet just got off for his first run. Let's have a quick chat to Ryan Cook. Ryan, first run about to get underway, how are you feeling? Nervous, very nervous. Fast here? Very fast. Long way to go, just see how we go. We've had some, uh, got a bit of history with Scotland, so uh, we're going to take it steady. Richard, fast here. We've got to keep an eye on the temperature of the belts. Yeah, we will today, definitely. Lots of flat out stuff, so. Just keep an eye on it, I think. Yeah. Um, again, we've got a great field of UTVs. Um, are you going to come out on top? Who knows? <laughs> we'll see you after the first run, eh? <laughs> Good luck. Cheers. Morning, Lee. Uh, you looking forward to this? Yeah, looking forward to it. It's, uh, it's very fast. It looks very fast out there, so uh, just try and keep it clean. Well, good luck. Uh, thanks, mate. Thank you. Here's Ben Duckworth, the mighty Milner. Third place. Morning, Ben. Hello. Going off the back of a podium at Radnor Forest, looking for the same again here? Yeah, yeah, we've just got to uh, just get the first lap in now, nice and consistent, and uh, make sure we've got the car set up right. Yeah, well, uh, you've uh, got lots of experience around here winning the 2016 uh, Scottish Borders Hill Rally. Yeah, although I don't think we can think too much about that because the course is a lot different. We're running it backwards to what we're used to, so. It does feel a lot, lot different, and it's dry today, which is never in November. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. All right, well, uh, they're calling you on. Good luck. Thank you very much. Joe, Forest, saw your first win in trophy class. Looking for the same again? Yeah, hopefully, yeah, as long as we keep the car on the track. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, suited to you. You like the speed. It's very fast here. Yeah, yeah, well, see how we get on, eh? Let's sign here. Just make it to the end, eh? Yeah. Good. <laughs> Good luck. See you later. Yeah. Steve Carroll running in the Clubmans with the K-Series 1.8 Freelander. Uh, Harry Forest Lodge, very fast track, look forward to it. Yeah, lovely, yeah, we had a drive round this morning and we, we do like it, we've competed up here quite a bit in the past and this, compared with the Hill Rally, is, uh, suits this motor exactly. A lot of fast streets, a lot of slow corners. We haven't got a lot of power, so we tend to go into corners a lot faster than a lot of other people, which uh, gives us a bit of interest in the outcome. <laughs> We've got to keep a constant speed around, and that's uh, obviously where the good times come from. Yeah, that's it, yeah. The chicanes that uh, slow you down, obviously, and there's plenty of them in this one. But hopefully them nice sweeping flat roads is going to do as well, like. Good luck. Okay, thank you very much. Phil Bayliss, winner of the Trophy Class 2016 in your TD5 Powered 90. Um, you've come back just for one event here at Forest Lodge. Um, scrappy engine in your car, looking forward to it. Yeah, it's always a good event, good fast event, so we thought we'd come and give it a go. We put a scrap engine in it over winter just to get it mobile and put our big turbo on it and we'll see how it goes. I know you've always got your eye on somebody to beat, who's, who's that this weekend? It'd be nice to see where I come in the trophy class standings, to see where we would have come if we'd have come back for the full year. Um, but I think the Yamahas are taking that away, so it should, should be good as a comparison if nothing else. Yeah. Good luck. Cheers, mate. So with that, let's go and find out how they got on after run one. Well, Martin, you come into this round leading the championship, 10 points ahead of Justin Birchall. It's a very fast track. Um, you've just done the first run, 7 minutes and 9, 14 seconds ahead of Justin. Uh, yeah, surprising, to be honest. Uh, we came over the finish line um, disappointed. Uh, it was just so slippy. Uh, loads of mistakes. Um, obviously blaming ourselves. Everyone, as it appears, has had the same problems. It's, it's the course. It will, it will get better, it will get uh, more traction, will uh, we'll come as the day goes on. So we're uh, just having a, bit, a few brake issues now. Hopefully we can get them resolved before the rain starts. It's a little bit cloudy now. Um, but yeah, good start, pleased with it. 
Good stuff. Um, and you mentioned it's, it's going to get better. That means there's going to be a lot more pace and faster times. Well, I hope so. <laughs> That's how racing generally goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, the weather will dictate a lot. So as long as the sun keeps shining, it will get faster because the track will get the, the little marbles um, of grit, of stone on the track will disappear and uh, everyone's confidence will grow and generally you get faster. So yeah, looking forward to the day. Just hope the weather stays nice. Good luck. All right, cheers. Problems at the Duckworth garage early on. Just uh, done run one, you jack the car up. Uh, wheel bearings? Well, we're putting a reasonable time that we're happy with. Um, taking it reasonably steady first run. Um, we just had a little knock, so we just we thought we'd found it in the damper. One of the dampers had got a knock in it, so we just swapped the damper. Um, but we still just, just feel there's a little knock from somewhere, so we're just looking around. It's not serious at the minute. What we don't want to do is find it when it's a serious problem. Mark Jakes, it was the uh, diff that gave up at Radnor Forest, putting you out after day one. Um, we've got two runs under your belt here, not running too bad, just behind Ryan Cook. Yeah, well, we've had a good start to the weekend, car's going really well. Um, we've changed the diff in the back, put a stronger one on it, so hopefully we'll sort that little gremlin out. Um, and the way it's been set up by Dan at Loft House, he's, he's giving it more traction on the back as well. So, yeah, the car's going really well. Great course, you know, it's absolutely it's so fast, really, really fast. But no, I mean, the guys of usual have done a great job of putting on a great, you know, setting up a great course. It's really good. So, so far, so good this weekend. Enjoying it. Hey, you've got a big smile on your face. Now, I can see uh, your co-driver is going around and checking all the tyre pressures. Because in this heat and with the speed and with the traction uh, across the course, uh, it actually increases the tyre pressures uh, throughout it and reduces yeah. traction. Yeah, we're just dropping the tyre pressures back down. A bit hard. We had a bit of a moment on that last run where the back end got away from us. So we're just dropping the tyres down a bit just so we get a bit more traction for the next run. Well, good luck. Good, thanks guys. Next to Mark Jakes we've got Rob Bull. Rob Bull also checking his tyre pressures. Rob? Hey, you alright? How are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, yeah. Pretty good. Uh, first couple of runs under your belt. Um, how, what's it like out there? Um, second run was better than the first. It's very marbly with all the loose stones on the top. But as they're gradually clearing, it's getting a bit more grip there now. But yes. the heat sort of made the tyres inflate a little bit as well, so just letting the pressures down. Hopefully, grip a bit more. Yeah, we just chat to Mark Jakes. Uh, he, has, he had the same problem. Uh, the tyres increasing. That, does that reduce traction? Yeah, it does. Yeah, it just makes them spin up a bit more. And this, the tyres sort of skate around on top rather than bite into something. See what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's all good. so far, thanks. Good stuff. All right. Well, a uh, long way to go. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Justin Birchall and Johnny Kunja just come back after run two. Um, a few seconds off the pace of Martin Gould at the minute, what, what more can you give? Uh, there's there's a, lot, a lot more to give, there's a long way to go yet. Um, got a bit better time on that sec second run, just struggling for grip on the first run really. Just done some uh, suspension changes and tyre pressure changes and pulled a bit more back on that one. Depends what he gets in his second one though, he hasn't been out yet so. Yeah, he, uh, he had brake problems after the first run, he's just been and um, fled them all. Um, I'm not too sure what sort of difference it's going to make, but he's still really quick on the first run. Yeah, he, he, was, he, was, he, was, he was ballistic on the first run. We thought we were quite quick. It was slippy, but we thought it was quick. But, yeah, he I think he took uh, 13 seconds out of us on that first run. So, but like I say, there's a long way to go. Good luck with this. Good luck. Thank you. Troubles in the first two rounds, but your dyno's out. The car's a completely different animal. Yeah, we've had it back on the dyno, and I think we've sorted all the problems with it now, so it's really running well now. It's like a different car altogether. We're really pleased with it. You can really stretch its legs here at Forest Lodge. I hope so. We'll see how we get on. <laughs> we had a first lap was okay. We just had a puncture on the second lap, so we're going to run a bit more pressure in the tyres. It's quite, quite a lot of rocks out there in the quarries. Quite, you know, sharp rocks. So we'll uh, see how we go. Good luck. Thank you. Ash, round the forest, so you cook the engine on the uh, Yamaha YZ1000R. First run under your belt here at Forest Lodge, same problem? Yeah, I think it's done the same thing, so hopefully try and get it back out there, but I don't think it will. Like. It's a great place to be here at Forest Lodge, very fast track, so you really want to put it through spaces. Yeah, it's but out there the first, it was got, we got about halfway down, but it was going quick. And, and then you, you brought it back, you've got a team of guys working on it, they still can't find the problem, uh, but you're still going to push it and get out there. Yeah, definitely. Until it breaks, isn't it? <laughs> Good luck. Cheers. The first look at this new vehicle with the British Cross Country Championship, 
the walk Adams Revolution, built by Stephen Adams, um, entirely from scratch. That's the, the, the chassis, the engine, roll cage, etc. Andy Powell, you're used to a 500 brake horsepower LS3 6.2-litre V8 in the beginning. This has got a one-litre eco boost engine. Yeah, it's, it is. Um, obviously, it's a, it's a, a, a huge difference. Um, getting used to that is going to take some doing. Uh, with, with the with the Simbagini, it was kind of point squirt and you were gone. This you have to drive a bit more, um, keep it on the rev, and, and yeah. And the first couple of runs uh, under your belt here at Forest Lodge, it's a very fast course. You, you're very familiar here, um, but you've got to drive it differently, like you just said. Yeah, uh, on the on the sort of fast straight cat one stuff, it's going very very well in the tight nagery uh, quarries and so on. Yeah, it, it takes a bit of driving, so yeah, you know, I'm sure I'll get used to it. Um, we're in a development year, so you know we'll just uh, try and make things better as we go along. So. Thank you very much. No worries, Joseph. Paul, a couple of runs under your belt so far at the Forest Lodge Estate. Running in the top five at the minute, um, you've made a few modifications to the can. You made it actually wider because uh, around the forest you're bouncing around. Yeah, um, it's a, this is a DS model. Um, and I think looking on hindsight, the RS model, which comes wider, it's like um, a DS is 64 inches standard and uh, the RS is 72 inches. And I think for, for this sort of terrain, definitely 72 inches wide. So I've converted this now up to the air and the suspension and also everything's much stronger. Great place to race here as well, very fast. Yeah, it is very place. Yeah, we we looked, we had a good time the first one, uh, like the 7:56, and we we're on to do a better time, and then uh, third of the way in got a puncher, and still posted, I think 7, 8, uh, 8 18. So yeah, happy with that, and looking to get back, change the tyres now, get back out and have another good run. I think you surprise uh, a lot of people here this weekend. Yeah, that that, that, that was my intention. Um, I I went to Walters Reed at the end of last year, and Richard Colby had a second, and I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll have a bit of that. <laughs> oh, Richard Colby still after that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just thinking, you know, um, like I, I, I race the buggies every weekend. Obviously, Richard doesn't. Um, so hopefully, I'm a, in the long term, I, I'm hopefully get a bit more advantage. I might have a bit more speed. But it's all down to buggy reliability. And in the Radnor, um, Richard uses head. He didn't push too hard. I'm not that sort of rider. I've got to push hard all the time. And, and the consequences were we destroyed the machine. <laughs> Yeah, it's just either one way or the other, is it? But well done, good luck. Yeah, thank you very much. Lee Mansfield taking it a little bit tentatively this morning. First run, puncher. Yeah, first run on Junction 5, we. Uh, Fell off the track and unfortunately hit a rock. I think it knocked the, well, damaged the tyre straight away. Um, so just drove the rest of the track, uh, trying to learn the lines, you know. Second run, 20 seconds quicker, so hopefully we can push a bit more now. But it's there's not a lot of runoff at all. It's all, you've got to stay on the top, stay on the top of the, the tracks. <laughs> You have, yeah, you've got to have tunnel vision around here because it's so fast as well. The grip is going to come uh, as well as the event evolves. Yeah, definitely struggling for grip. Um, having to lift the throttle off to go faster, it's, it's bizarre. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, we're enjoying it, so just got to stay in it. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly have, you've got to be in it to win it. Um, but uh, Radnor Forest, it was a half shaft problem and then a clutch problem. Yeah, Radnor, the last event, yeah, we, uh, we blew a shaft on the back rear. And we had clutch problems all weekend and had to finish the last three stages with no clutch at all. I mean, the service crew were brilliant. They worked till 2.30 in the morning trying to get me back out, and they did. Um, so I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. Can't let them down. <laughs> it's, a, it's a team effort, isn't it, racing? Oh, big time, yeah. I mean, you, all your work's done in the workshop, you know. Um, and you've just got to try and keep your thing going here. Uh, so, yeah, your car's prepped right, it's fit. You, you stand a chance. Yeah. Long way to go here. Good luck. Yeah, long way to go, thanks. Thank you. We saw Ben Duckworth before he went out tinkering with his wheel bearings. He thought it was a knock at the front um, and he just wanted to be sure before he went out, but he's just come back, been towed up. Matt Cook will speak to his co-driver. Matt has just tucked him into some uh, flapjacks. <laughs> They're really nice. That'd be energy. <laughs> what happened? Um, on the start line, off the start line, first, second, third, went to fourth, and I shattered the engine drive CV joint. So uh, we're going to strip it out and have a look at it and see, see what damage has been done, really. So you've got to take the engine out, have you? No, no, it's a, a shaft between the gearbox and the engine. 
So it runs at engine speed and connects the two together. Oh, could be a quick job, it could be something more serious. It could be more serious. We're more worried why it broke, really. So we need to find out why. We're going to do it again. So, um, yeah, get it apart and have a look. Good luck. Thanks. Ryan, driving with a bit of caution after last year, uh, but punch you on the first run. Yeah, we've, uh, Scotland's having another uh, battle with me again. So, uh, but I'm here, you know, it's uh, not, not an ideal start, but a long way to go. So, um, yeah, puncture. And then obviously, second run, a puncture as well. So, uh, we're not doing so. We're here, we're in it, and obviously I've been victim of this place a few times with punctures, so uh, it's not new news, but uh, it's not doing me any good at the minute, but I'm still here. <laughs> you are. And the fight we saw at Radnor between you and Ben Duckworth and the two Milners, um, Ben has just come back and he's broken his drive shaft from the engine drive shaft to the gearbox. Yeah, it's not uh, not ideal, is it? It's a shame. I mean, hopefully, I don't know whether he can fix it. The, uh, I'm sure he'll have a good go. Um, but obviously, yeah, it's a shame to... It's motorsport. I'm, I've got mine in the post, I'm sure, yet. So uh, <laughs> I've still got them to do. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's just this cruel sport we're in, you know, and the pain that we give the cars. We may get away with it at the event we're giving the pain, but like I say, there could be damage in the post that we're not aware of yet. So fingers crossed, we'll just keep going and we'll just collect points. I think that's the plan for Scotland this weekend. Very wise. <laughs> Cheers. Two runs in, Steve Smith's working on his car at the moment. You had a punch of first lap. Yeah, just going to the last quarry, there's a big rock on the left hand side. It's obviously part of the mountain, it doesn't move. <laughs> yeah, so the car came off uh, worse, worse. Yeah, it only just took the sidewall out, but it didn't affect the time, really. it was right at the end, so it's fine. And the course is going to evolve. Are you, are you struggling with the grip at the minute? No, it's alright. It's alright. Good stuff, well, good luck, long way to go. Cheers, thank you. So three runs in and Justin Birchall has got a lead away from Martin Gould. He's eight seconds ahead, but he just come back, turn a tyre off and damage uh, the CV boot. Yeah, just the, up here, the stones are that aggressive. I think this one just flicked up into the wheel. Just took a CV boot off, so for 10 minutes we'll have this fixed, no bother. But yeah, a bit of a puncher, top quarry, it's quite, uh, be quite an evil place around here. Just all about getting to the end. Yeah, it is. And uh, Justin Birchall, you've just pipped uh, Martin for the lead at the minute, eight seconds ahead of him. Yeah, he's got um, some engine trouble, uh, unfortunately. Uh, maybe a bit of lady luck for me, but um, if, if he fixes it, the battle will still be on. Um, he's, he's really quick as Martin on here. Uh, just have to uh, try and not get any more punches and keep it, keep it clean and tidy. Well, you're sharing the fastest time in Martin a minute, seven minutes six. Uh, is there any? Can you get gold quicker with that? Um, yeah, we, we, there is more we can get out of it. The, the quarries are getting cut up, hence we've got a rear puncher on the uh, the near side there. The track's clearing. Um, it's just uh, it's just how big your cojones are, really. <laughs> There's. Uh, it's all right for me, is it left hand drive, but all the drop offs are on my side, so I'm just seeing them all. So, uh, yeah, I think there'll be a few more seconds we could pull out of it. Well, good luck. Cheers. Adam Evans, we miss you at Radnor Forest, but it was a great fight between you and Richard Colby at uh, Pikes Peak. Here at Forest Lodge, sun shining, very quick uh, course, but it's taking you a while to get into it. Yeah, the first two runs were a bit of a, a, a catastrophe, really. Um, I've got the completely inappropriate tyres, as you'll see. Um, it, I just couldn't get any grip, I couldn't get it to bite into the dirt and get any grip and I've overshot some corners and made some mistakes and it was basically tyre pressure, I've left, left, left 15 psi out of the tyres and now I've gained 16 seconds in a breath, so a bit happier now, so a bit more confident that I can start pushing a bit now. Yeah, well that puts you down in the low 7 minutes, which is what some of the guys at the top are doing. Yeah, yeah, these cars are capable of it, it's just whether I'm capable of it. Um, it they're easy to drive, they're easy to drive hard and fast, you're just going to keep it on the track, it's the person who will do well who will finish. As I always say, and it's, it's usually why I do well, not because I'm particularly fast, it's just because I'm consistent. All right, well, there's a long way to, to go. Good luck. Thank you very much. Adrian, here at Forest Lodge, Max, halfway stage of uh, this season. Um, you're putting in some really fast times at the minute, only 14 seconds after the fastest time set by Martin Gould and Justin Birchall. Yeah, uh, those boys are pretty quick and brave. I, um, 
I haven't got my brave pants on to keep up with those two, so I'm going to uh, just do my thing. Um, yeah, quite enjoying it now. We've just done, uh, I think we've just done lap five, and we've just remembered the course a little bit and just uh, finding where the grip is. It feels quite nice. The cars. We've just done uh, two laps back to back, and it's quite nice. The car feels warm. And it seems better for the for the second run. So uh, yeah, we're just going to run at this pace if I can. Just, uh, never been here before. Beautiful place, but. Uh, we'll, uh, yeah, there's some nasty drop-offs, so we're going to be visiting those quick now. As you go uh, round and round, uh, obviously you're going to remember the course, the grip's going to come in. Are you going to get more confident, maybe push a bit more? Um, I'll have a look at the times later on to see where we are, but at the moment I'm quite happy where we are. We can we can push a little bit more, but I, I don't know, we're quite we're quite happy where we are, I think. We'll stick it where we are. And at the start of the season, uh, this was a brand new car for yourself. Yeah. Um, you, you get into grips with it. Um, yeah. well, what are your thoughts so far? Third running, third round of um, <coughs> so The discipline is a lot different to where we come from. We did all-wheel drive club. Um, and it's probably a little bit of horses shorter, probably a little bit more time than this. Uh, and so we're just we're still learning to be honest with you. Um, all new stages. Um, you know, I think Walsh Arena we is the last event for the this for the BCC, so we'll might know some of that there, but everything else we haven't got a clue where we're going yet, so we're still uh, yeah, we're still learning, definitely still learning. Well it's great to see you out, thank you. Thank you, thanks very much. Well, John Pickering, first time you've done a full weekend with the British Cross Country Championship, and it's a fantastic venue here at Forest Lodge. Absolutely brilliant. Love it a bit. It is a venue that I drop everything to come for. It's so good. It's so, so interesting. Yeah. And the modifications you've done to the suspension, uh, working a treat, you wouldn't have come here for the full weekend if you had the whole old, 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 no, old suspension. No, the old suspension. We were getting towards the end of what we could do with it. Uh, it was getting... Not unreliable, it was getting unpredictable. Uh, <laughs> something you don't want. <laughs> no, no, well, not when you're doing these speeds around these kind of courses. Compared with other people, we're not, not half as quick, but we, we're still getting a move on. Yeah. Uh, we're still trying hard. And let's have a look at the uh, suspension. You've got quite a neat setup here in the back. <laughs> the nice thing about the car is that originally, with the, new, the old suspension, it turned in very well and it still turns in just as well. But it's the rear suspension where the problems were. Yeah. Uh, um, talk us through this, who built this? This, this was done by uh, Bare Bones Racing. R Richard Hopkins, who did a brilliant job. Uh, I finished it off by closing everything in and putting the gaiters and stuff in to conform with the MSA regulations. You're not allowed to have moving parts in the rear of your car. And of course, it's still basically a saloon car. Not that though anybody could get in there, but uh, and it's proved to be a hundred percent. The harder we go, the more reliable it is, and it's predictable. We know exactly what it's going to do. Well, it's uh, a lot. I wish it could say the same for me. <laughs> <laughs> You'll live forever, John. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> well, John, my co-driver. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh, well, there's a long way to go, good luck. So sadly, Ben Duckworth and Matt Cook have had to retire the car. It wasn't as simple as you thought. No, we were hoping it was just a CV joint that had blown between the engine and the transmission, the actual shafts sheared. So um, we're going to uh, go back and have a good look at it and uh, get a bit stronger for next time. Yeah, so it's... It's, it's another learning curve, isn't it? It's, it's, it's always that fine balance between making it as light as possible and as strong as, as, strong as possible. And you know, we've, we've tried to get some weight out of the car. We've taken 150 out for this season. Um, and you want to keep going, and these are the sort of chances you have to take to, to do it and uh, learn from it and uh, then move on, make it stronger and come back. Well, commiserations. Yep, it happens. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Five runs in, and currently Justin Birchall leading. Martin Gould on his fourth run has just blown his engine up, so it gives uh, Justin bit of breathing space. Justin, you've got a bit of breathing space now, two minutes in the lead. Yeah, I've just got to uh, just keep a nice comfy cushion now and uh, just bring it home. Uh, unfortunately, Martin's blown his engine. Uh, yeah, just keep that lead now. Yeah, well, good luck. Cheers. One run left to do of day one of the British Coast Country Championship here at Forest Lodge. And it's Lee Mansfield and Dave Roberts in currently in third place after the demise of Ben Duckworth and also uh, Martin Gould. Yes, yeah, it's um, it's been an interesting one. We've put in some constant laps. Um, we've kept it constant all the way around. 
we're finding it. We've had a few niggles. Um, nowhere near as many niggles as what we've had um, at the previous two rounds. Um, the clutch is now repaired. The clutch is on song. Engine's going well. We've had a few little cutouts, but um, other than that, a little bit of a reverse on one stage. But we, we're steady around the about 7.20, 7.30 at the minute. So, yeah, we've uh, hopefully one last, one last lap of the day. I'm going to go out there and just do exactly the same. Keep it constant, and then uh, we'll see where we are tomorrow. Ryan Cook's just behind you as well. He's found some pace. I think he's, he's doing in the seven twenties as well. Yeah, he's yeah. yeah. He'll just be yeah. He'll be coming through quite nicely. To be honest with you, I mean Ryan. Ryan had a big off here um, last year. I think it was. It's an unsettling place to come back to once you've had an off like he had. Um, it's gaining confidence through the day, which we all do. Everyone does. Um, so yeah, he, he should be back on song. He should be back up where he where he largely should be. To be honest with you, I mean he's a really good driver. So. Yeah. so. Good luck, one, one run to do. Excellent, thank you very much. Slow start this morning, Ryan Cook, um, but you're gradually getting a pace there into the low 720s and just behind Lee Mansfield. Yeah, we um, went a bit steady to be fair, but for the right reasons, obviously from this time last year. A uh, bit of an awkward time to speak to now because it all happened this time last year. Last year. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're um, just chipping away and the times are coming down. So, uh, well, like I say, I'm here to do well in the championship. So uh, I know it can all be lost ever so easily. So uh, we're just pushing on as safely as we can and driving as fast as we can, and we'll just see what happens. Still a long way to go. This place is infamous for destroying cars. So uh, hopefully. Hopefully we'll finish. That's the plan. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see you at the end. Hope so. Thank you. Adrian, end of day one here at Forest Lodge in second place. Uh, yeah, eventful day. Um, I think we're there by default, to be fair. Um, we're just getting a little bit quicker as so we've got a bit more confidence in the car. Uh, the lines come nice on the track, to be fair. Now, you still be careful, but it's, it's, it seems nice to drive, so we're just getting a little bit quicker. Yeah, so we're uh, yeah, pleased to be in that position. Yeah, really pleased. Yeah, that's good. You're behind Justin Birchall. He's, he's doing low seven minutes. He's just on a seven flat. You're doing 716. So, no, he's... Um, We'll apply some pressure, but we'll, uh, we'll, we won't take any risks. At no point. We'll, just, uh, we'll, ju we'll, we'll carry on as we are. And the person behind you is uh, Lee Mansfield at the minute. The first time he's done his 7.29, then it's Ryan Cook, who's in the low 7.20s. So you've just got to keep it all together. Yeah, yeah, well, you, yeah, you've got to apply the pressure and just try and, we'll try and stay tight if we can. That's the plan. Service a car tonight and then, um, yeah, hopefully it uh, goes smoothly tomorrow. Close of play, day one of the third round of British Cross Country Championship. Martin Gould's uh, blown his engine up, which put Justin Birchall in the lead. And Justin, last run, blown a diff, got a puncher. Uh, oh, it's third, set, third run to last, blew a diff. Uh, so we managed to uh, change that in half an hour. Dan and I have done an absolutely fantastic job there. Uh, the diff that we put in is totally different to the one I've, uh, we've taken out, so just need to compensate there. But then I've just got, got a punch on the last run, which has just cost me 40 seconds, I think. So I had a buffer of two minutes, so I just need to uh, just keep that buffer tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Adrian Marfell's uh, really picked up the pace. He's doing the 7.15s at the moment. Your fastest time this, today is seven minutes. Yep. <laughs> keep going. Here's how they look after day one. We just heard from Justin and Adrian, but it's Lee Mansfield in third place, just ahead of Ryan Cook, then Adam Evans, Rob Bull, Mark Jakes, Richard Wynn Williams, Paul Myers, and Richard Colby. So, drama at the end of day one. Please join us after the break for day two. for the second round of British Cross Country Championship. Justin Birchall is about to get the day underway. Four, three, two, one. And he powers off. Screaming a six cylinder BMW engine. But behind him we've got Adrian Marfell, he's in second place after Martin Gould's demise yesterday. 
And then Lee Mansfield in third place, followed by Ryan Cook. Morning, Adrian. You alright? Lee Mansfield. Morning, Lee. Third place. You've got a big Milner breathing on your neck. <laughs> Ryan's going to be uh, Ryan's going to be certainly out to catch us today. So we just got to try and keep it clean, keep it tidy. Just keep putting the times we did yesterday, and we should be victorious, as they say. <laughs> Yeah, you uh, put it in the low 720s yesterday. Uh, yeah. Just got to keep it constant there, and you yeah. should uh, keep, manage keep, the gap. That's right. If you keep around there, that, that's what we need to do. So, yeah. Good luck, Lee. Thank you. A quick word with Ryan Cook as well. Morning, Ryan. Finishing's the key here, but is your eyes on the green machine in front? Yeah, that's the plan today. Just um, now we know how many runs we've got. Obviously. Important things are championship, so uh, we'll keep that in the forefront of our heads. But hopefully, uh, see how we go today. Good luck to Lee, he deserves to be there. He's driven and he hasn't put a foot wrong, so uh, I hope all's well for him. But obviously, I am. Yeah. Oh, good luck, Lee. Good luck, Ryan. Thank you. Morning, Adam. Morning. You're a fifth place overall at the minute. You've got some very impressive machinery in front of you. Can you catch him? Uh, I'm not sure I can catch him, but I'll try. I'm surprised to be, or I'm pleased to be in the position I'm in. Um, it's just a bit of a surprise every night, but I'll try my best as always. Yeah, well, Richard Corby's way down the field uh, today, so a good, good championship point. Uh, I've not finished yet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah, a long way to go. Good luck. Thank you very much. Take care. So John Pickering is first time doing two days with the British Cross Country Championship. You thought you were going to have to look after the car a bit more than you had to, but it's uh, going pretty well. It's doing all right. It's doing very well. We've got one or two things that are coming out. <laughs> especially the brain uh, but no it's doing very well it, it's, it's proved to be a remarkable vehicle and as you know with the new suspension on that's helpful beyond all measure it's made it more controllable and it's easy postcard from scotland mate <laughs> yeah yeah no it is really very good it's cracking well, you've got a full day ahead of you go and enjoy it we are certainly going to do that <laughs> Thanks, John. See you later, mate. Cheers. Adam Evans spoke to you before the first run of Sunday morning, um, about a mile into the stage, uh, front suspension snapped. Yes, unfortunately, you jinxed me in the interview before. Uh, it's one of those things, it's a, it's a completely standard car, other than the safety mods, uh, and the, for no real reason, the front wishbone just got completely sheared and fired me into the ditch and put me out of the championship and out of the game. First couple of rounds done on Sunday morning, and the battle for third place is really hotting up. Lee Mansfield is currently in third place, but Ryan Cook's only 23 seconds behind him. Ryan Cook's doing slightly faster times, and with only four runs to do, can he make it to third? So another run down, and it's getting closer and closer for the battle of third place. Ryan Cook's just pulled out another 10 seconds, so it's 19 seconds between. There's only four runs to do. Yeah, he's going really well. It's going really well, Ryan is. Um, like I said yesterday, you can't take it away from him. Great driver. Um, we're sort of running out of tyres at the minute, and. I wouldn't say running out of bravery, but that track is still, it could still come back and bite you. Um, it can bite bad as well. So uh, there's been a fair few offs yesterday, fair few breakages as well. We just want to be finishing this one. We just want to be circulating still what we're doing. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more improvement. I want to see the lower 20s, 720s. Um, yeah, we'll see where it takes us. So what will be will be. Ryan's getting brave. I'll try and get into Dax's head in a minute and see if we can uh, sort that one out, but I don't think we will. So, <laughs> no, no, it's good. It is good. So. It's great to see the car at the top of the table. It's the last uh, two rounds, so yeah. plagued with uh, mechanical problems and technical issues. Yeah, I think we've won the majority of that. We've, we had a bit of a result last night, and hopefully it has fixed it. We found a relay at the back of the dashboard, and just something as simple as one of the connections was loose. It had been pushed down. We're fingers crossed and touching wood, we're hoping that that is the electrical gremlin that has uh, it'll now be done, dusted. So we've done two laps, we haven't had a single flutter or blip, so we're, we're quite happy with that at the end of this. So. Oh, good luck. Thank you very much. Paul Myers are here at the Fantastic Forest Lodge, third round of the British Cross Country Championship, um, halfway through the last day on Sunday, um, currently running in the top ten, consistent times of eight minutes. We'll talk through the cars, fantastic machine, you've got um, a quaif diff in the front, you've got a quaif um, sequential box with flat shift and you've got an LSD in the back. Correct, yes, yeah, so uh, that setup really gives us um, the car, makes the car very drivable, uh, with different diffs, front to back. Uh, so the car slides, it comes back in in line pretty quickly, it doesn't spin, so uh, it, it, it makes it uh, 
Makes it way brighter for that one. And the flat shift is a fantastic thing on perfect for rallying. Correct, yeah, I mean, a flat shift works on, on the gear lever, so when you put pressure on the gear lever, it knocks about 500 RPM off the, um, the engine, um, which means that the, the gearbox will shift. So literally, you just hit the lever, you don't have to lift the accelerator, you don't have to um, use a clutch, and it changes gear. How fast does it change? Um, quick, quicker than you can shift it manually, so very, very quick. Uh, the advantage is halfway around the corner, you can change gear. Uh, really, just by so you don't have to um, declutch, etc. And that uh, puts you straight back on full power. So you, you're straight back on full power. You just keep your foot planted, and it, it shifts for you. Yeah. Well, it's, it's great to watch. You've got a few runs to do. Go and enjoy it. Thank you very much. So the other competitor in the UTV class is Richard Colbin of Polaris, currently running ninth, but you've got electrical problems at the moment. Yeah, we've got a little electrical gremlin somewhere, but I think we've just about got to the bottom of it, so we're, we're nearly there with it now, hopefully. Uh, you put in some uh, really consistent times, so even doing a sermon of 50 in limp hole mode. Yeah, we, uh, the, the gremlin's putting it into limp mode, it's putting the boost all together on the turbo, um, but even with that, we did a 750 yesterday, and then um, a bit slower today, but the main competitor in the UTV class is, has gone out, Adam's gone out today, so we're just trying to finish and get the points, really. Yeah, amazing, now you've got four to do. Um, just finishing in the top ten will uh, give you a handful of points, which is well needed. Yeah, that's it. We're just thinking about the championship and uh, you know get the points and get finished and we'll do that thing. Good luck. Nice one. Cheers. Richard Colby looking for an out-and-out -out class win and very valuable points for the championship. Next up, we're going to look at the battle for third place between Ryan Cook and Lee Mansfield. Ryan Cook's got a five-litre Jaguar Range Rover engine with all 500 brake horsepower and a supercharger. Lee Mansfield's got a 5.2 litre Rover engine with 365 brake horsepower. So Ryan Cook has got the more power than him. And here they are, here we go. The best time for Ryan Cook is seven seconds quicker than Lee Mansfield. So potentially Ryan could take him coming to the close of play. Just depends on how many runs he do get in. John, after the roll at Radnor, I finished in third after it, uh, you've come to uh, Forest Lodge and currently second in the trophy class. That's good news, yeah. Uh, not really worried about the place too much, but really enjoying the, uh, the weekend. Very nervous start yesterday, uh, very loose at the beginning of the day, but as it's swept out, I'm really, really beginning to enjoy it. The confidence is building. Uh, had a couple of issues, we keep tearing brake pipes off in the quarries, but. Uh, Nothing too serious, running a lap with no brakes. <laughs> what a pace you're going. <laughs> yeah, we're not the fastest out there, but it's it's still tricky with no brakes. So. Yeah, and the modification you did over the winter, I was putting a manual box in it. Are you getting scripts with that now? Uh, just, I think so, starting to, yeah. It's certainly a lot more fun, a lot more control over the car. i just got to build my trust in it. Yeah. Right, well, there's a few runs to do. Good luck. Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll finish the day. Justin, one run to do, but you've been taking it easy the past few runs and you've been getting a lot of punches. You lost more time to Adrian Marfell. Uh, yeah, just took that one uh, a bit steadier because uh, it's really roughing, rutting up in the corners. All the big rocks are coming out. Um, and I got that just before the dam uh, on, the, on the tight right. It just bit the punch up there. So going slow sometimes doesn't help. Uh, you need to get over the rough stuff quicker. So I've just got one left to do. I think we've still got a two minute margin. So I uh, just need to bring it on. Good luck. Cheers. Thanks. So the fight for third place between Ryan Cook and Lee Mansfield nearly ended in disaster for Lee Mansfield. Um, he hit a tree at 100 mile an hour, caused a lot of damage, ripped the door off, ripped the wing off. David, you're still in the lead. Yes. Uh, you know when I said we weren't going to probably go out and try, we're just going to circulate. Um, when that green light goes green, unfortunately, uh, other things come. It's always on my side, isn't it? So, unfortunately, in Forest Estate, there is one less tree. Um, we, seem to have, uh, we seem to have picked it up along the way and uh, flattened it, but um, it was a shame, it was a real good run, we were doing well, we still came through after this and this was about halfway round, still came in with a 7.29, so that circulation, <laughs> circulation minutes that I was looking for, we still got it. 
friends. Yeah, it's just just one of those. It's just one of those. So you've got to patch it up now. Um, two runs today. Um, hopefully, you can get the podium. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully, yeah. I don't think Ryan's still going to give up that easy, but yeah, we've. Uh, we seem to have pulled a bit of a truce now because the damage is getting a bit too much, I think. So we'll, we'll see how it goes, but no, it's still been a great weekend of racing. And he's kept me safe, so. Yeah. Not like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you say that would have destroyed you. <laughs> no, no, it's spot on. Yeah, well, good luck. Thank you, cheers. Two runs at a weekend to go. Currently in third place is Lee Mansfield. He's doctored his car back together with gaffer tape. Done a very good job there, actually. But just in front of him is Ryan Cook, who's been chasing him all weekend. He's trying to hide. <laughs> Ryan, you lost a bit of time, I think a minute behind now going into the last two runs. Yeah, we um, had a puncture, so uh, one of them things, we had, we had a good go, we did it, I think we, to be fair, we probably did enough, um, but it's just one of them things, it's cruel out here, you get punctures and we've still got two runs to go, so we're just going to circulate now and hopefully get for the finish, there's too much to do and not enough time to do it, yet, so uh, I'm really pleased with the results. I can't thank everyone that helps me enough to get here. Foops, Land Rover, my family, my friends that all get stuck in to help me get here. So it's just, it was worth a go, but this motorsport, it? the puncture's the difference, that's all it is. So I just wish I'd get them at the end of the stage instead of at the beginning. Well, you're taking away a good haul of points, so it's not all bad. Yeah, that's the plan. It's not over yet, but that's the plan. That's the plan. Good luck. Cheers. Well, Ryan did make it to the end, but Justin Birchall takes his first win of the year, 1 minute 40 seconds ahead of Adrian Marfelt, then Lee Mansfield, a well-earned third place. Ryan Cook ends up in fourth, then Richard Wynn williams and Rob Bull in sixth. Adam Evans, Ben Duck with Martin Gould, all retired. This is how the trophy class ended up. Paul Rowlands taking a win in his Can-Am DS, 15 minutes ahead of second place, John Damrell and Nick Blundell. And it's Ashley Jones and Joe Quirk unfortunately retiring the Yamahas after overheating their engines. And here's the Clubman class. Phil Bayliss takes a win in the Clubman class ahead of Steve Carroll in his Land Rover Freelander. Jason Rowlands unfortunately retiring early on in the event. How the championship table looks after three rounds. Justin Birchall topped the table now after the win. Uh, Adrian Marfell in second and Ryan Cook in third place. Lee Mansfield in fourth. Richard Colby in fifth. Steve Smith in sixth. Mike Moran in seventh. Rob Bull in eighth. Martin Gould all the way down in ninth place. And here's a trophy class standings. Paul Rowlands uh, leading the way in a minute, 246 points. John Damron in second, 225 points. Joe Quirk, third place. Lee. The uh, Forest Lodge Estate second is tall, not only on yourself, but the car, and you come home in third place. Congratulations. Yeah, very pleased, but uh, as you can see, a few battle scars. <laughs> With uh, Ryan certainly put up a, a tremendous fight, uh, pushed us right, right to the wire. Um, as you can see, we, <laughs> we hit a tree absolutely flat out, um, and we thought we'd lost it, to be fair, but then, unfortunately for Ryan, he had a couple of punches, and it put us back in the run. I think we were six seconds, something. Uh, I think it was two runs for the end, so I was very, very, very pleased with the outcome. Very pleased, yeah. Are you looking forward to doing it all over again at Kerry? Yeah, definitely. We'll be there. We'll be there in uh, after the car's been rebuilt. Yeah, a lot to do. Maybe going to talk to the wife. <laughs> <laughs> Let her know the bad news. So uh, no, but no, great result, great event here. It's. Uh, it's definitely need your big boy pants on here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, well done, you, you deserve it. Yeah, thank you very much. Well done, thank you. Well, Adrian, it's been a tough weekend here at Forest Lodge, but second place overall. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's been a very, very tough couple of days. I've got to say, it's th now this last couple of uh, three or four laps, all the stones are coming out the surface. Uh, some attrition now, yeah. So we're glad to have got our runs done and finished, yeah. Good. Thankful to get it on the trailer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's been, been a tough weekend. Definitely tough weekend, yeah. You know, we've got to do it all over again at Kerry in a few weeks' time. Yeah, I look forward to it. Yeah, we're uh, yeah we're enjoying it. I have to say, well, we've enjoyed this weekend. It's um, yeah, you have to be brave here. Yeah? I take my hat off to some of the boys that are really really quick. So uh, yeah, yeah, enjoy the weekend. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, well done. All right, thanks so much. Justin, it's not been easy, but congratulations, first yeah. win of the season, and it puts you at the top of the championship. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been tough today, uh, this weekend. Extremely tough, hard. Uh, commiserations to Martin and Simon, but. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an area that's uh, always caused me trouble. Uh, I absolutely love it, but um, this, this area does pick out any weak spots in your car. Uh, and you haven't got much area to uh, drift off the track, so 
it is an hard event, but uh, yeah, well, I'm glad I finally won here. I might have broken my bad luck. So. Yeah, well, we've got a few tough events ahead of us. Kerry next and then Bovington. Yeah, so I just said to Sam, and then uh, you are going to Bovington. Uh, just because of the, the uh, time of the year, uh, it's probably going to be absolutely wet through again. We were hoping that we could probably drop that in our drop round, but uh, what's that? We'll have to go and do it. So, uh, no, looking forward to it. Yeah, so we're looking forward to seeing this battle and how it pans out throughout the season. Yeah, it's uh, it's going to be a good one. Put the uh, put the cat in the apple cart, as they say, aren't they? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So with that, it's blown a championship wide open. Please join us next time when the action comes from Kerry Forest. Two runs in. Uh, Steve Smith just tying up the uh, bolts on the wheel. Um, it's tough out there. Yeah, it's not too bad. You don't see Lewis Hamilton did work on his own car, there, do you? Where's my bitchy? Hey. Well. You know, I, I, I just think it's wrong having Justin Birchall over my footage. It's just not right. And Toby Jefferson has been around since the dinosaurs. Toby, <laughs> <laughs> how are you feeling? <laughs> oh. Two runs in, Steve Smith tying on the balls. Have you had punches? Uh, I've done that before, yeah, but I can't talk to you now. I'm busy. I'm working. So you have a team of guys to do this for you? I can't talk to you now. I'm working. I'm busy. Don't <laughs> worry, JJ. <laughs> Steve. This is all that's left of your opponents in the G1 class. Yeah, bit of a sorry size, isn't it? But there you go. You can't keep up with me. What can you do? Exactly. And you, you, you're eighth at the moment in the uh, overall championship. Um, oh, am I? I didn't know. I didn't realise that. Oh, right. Okay. So it's good news for you. Yeah. Better than being ninth, I suppose. <laughs> Who is ninth? <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not Alan Thomas. Who?